Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to head into metamorphic rocks. Here on this little diagram, we have a picture of uh, what appears to be a metamorphic rock right here. It's actually just any rock, but we have this guy underneath. So metamorphic rocks are going to have something to do with this, and we'll get into that. Metamorphic rocks are formed differently than how igneous rocks and sedimentary rocks form. Metamorphic rocks need heat and pressure to form metamorphic rocks. So like that big guy holding up that rock, all that, that strength is going to be used to press and change sedimentary and igneous rock into metamorphic rock. The changes that occur to the metamorphic rock do not actually melt the rock. So there's enough heat to get what we call a recrystallization of the material. So if it melted, it would actually become igneous rock. So we're not there. We're almost towards igneous, but we're not there yet. And what ends up happening is all the minerals actually recrystallize. So if we were to look at something like shale, remember back to a few screencasts ago, that sedimentary rock with these nice thin layers that were evenly deposited over time. If we apply pressure to that, to that shale, it'll actually turn into metamorphic slate. And notice that I push down on it in the same direction that those layers formed. And what we get is you can still see there's some layering to it or breaks in layers, but there it's a little bit more smooth looking and it's a little bit more refined looking. We could do the same thing to conglomerate. Conglomerate, nice rounded pebbles that we have in here. If we apply a pressure to it, notice how those pebbles will actually start to flatten out like we see here so sedimentary conglomerate actually turns into what's called a meta conglomerate metamorphic conglomerate pretty easy igneous granite we were looking at it in class we could do the same thing we have all this nice quartz some amphiboles in there some feldspars and if we apply pressure to it you can see that what we get is a pattern. We have a dark band here, dark, dark. We get these alternating light and dark um, recrystallization patterns, and granite turns into gneiss. We could take sandstone right here, typical sandstone sediment, apply um, pressure to it, and we get quartzite, heat and pressure. We can do the same things. Here's another example of a metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rocks are going to recrystallize the minerals that make it up. They're going to be exposed to extreme heat and pressure below Earth's surface. So here, this should say Earth. The deeper they are underneath Earth's surface, the more heat and pressure they're going to be exposed to and the more metamorphism that's going to happen. If we look at page seven of our earth science reference table, it gives us the metamorphic rock chart. And we can see we have type of metamorphism right here. And we can look at as this arrow goes down, it increases heat and pressure. So we have slate, phyllite, schist, and gneiss, all being metamorphic rocks but the exposure metamorphism or the amount increases as we go down. Then of course we have the bottom half of the chart, which we'll have regional metamorphism, which we'll explain in a moment, the same as the above, and a couple in contact. So the metamorphic rock chart, it's actually a very easy chart to look at, broken up basically by this dividing line here between non-foliated and foliated, and we'll talk more about that. Here's looking at sedimentary to metamorphic. And remember, just like page seven said, we have a small amount metamorphism here. And as we get deeper, we have more and more metamorphism. So we would have something up on the top, mud, typical mud, your clays and silts all deposited. Well, if we sub subject that to metamorphism, we get, um, sorry, if we let that pile up, we can get shale, sedimentary rock. Once we get to here, shale will turn into slate. Then we can have more higher grade metamorphism as we go deeper down into the earth. 
um, one type of metamorphism that was mentioned from the reference table is regional metamorphism. Regional metamorphism is when there's heat and pressure that act over a wide geographic area, such as the east coast of the United States or the Rocky Mountain. Whenever we see mountains forming, that is a form of regional metamorphism. It's pressures of plate tectonics of the Earth's plates moving. And as the differences in the density of either oceanic or continental crust come in contact with each other, stress builds up and changes the rock that initially composed that area. So if we look on the east coast of the United States, the Appalachian Mountains, we have pressures that push this way. And it's kind of building up here. And you can see these folds for Appalachian Mountains right here. Tectonics pushing this way against the rest of the continent right here. And this is where our pressure builds up. Here's an example of regional metamorphism on New York State Thruway. We have these, you can see this folding. So that means this area was pushed. There was metamorphism pushing on this rock. The second type of metamorphism we have is called contact metamorphism. This occurs when we have an igneous intrusion or some other igneous rock coming in contact with other types of rocks. That extreme heat from that melted magma or lagma as it comes through the Earth's surface or sits on top will bake or change the rock below it. So at the boundary between those two types of rocks, we get this zone of contact metamorphism. So you have the rock that was there, the magma chamber, and the, the change that occurs right at the boundary between them. So in this area, we have a magma chamber right here. And where these X's are, that is our contact metamorphism. Notice the up rock up here hasn't been changed here. Nothing just right at that boundary. So contact metamorphism only occurs at the place where the intrusion is. So you can see here as this intrusion comes up, it's going to change the rock that it's in contact with. Contact metamorphism is shown by these little like spikes or hairs that come off the intrusion. So contact metamorphism only occurs at the place where the intrusion contacts the local rock. It takes us back to page seven. So now we can see our regional metamorphism up on top associated with this term, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and regional contact metamorphism down here on the bottom half. That's about it for this screencast into metamorphic rocks. Keep it nice and short before we go on really looking at how to identify metamorphic rocks. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.